so I just thought I'd do a little cheeky Asian on it update. So the initial intel on Friday was that it was a single Asian on it that had spotted exiting the rear of a HGV trailer that had recently arrived from France. So the MBU came up here to Leyland and to set bait traps in around the area where it was seen. And then as the public were notified, I know several other beekeepers in the area have started putting traps out and whatnot. There's been no update since. Uh, so I can only presume it's not been seen or caught, but the weather's been really, really bad here. I mean, we had terrible hail and cold weather on Saturday. It's not much better now. So we can only hope that it's perished or uh, has died by some other means. Uh, but unlike most of the eagles that arrive from France, it certainly hasn't been put up in a hotel. But let's not lose sight of the fact that it's one Asian hornet, at least. It's not a nest that's been found in a hedge or a tree or multiple Asian hornets. So the chances of it surviving uh, less than obviously if we did discover a nest or something like that. That said, it hasn't stopped some local beekeepers becoming self-appointed uh, Asian Hornet gurus and skirmongering the pu general public. So thanks to Kev and to Duncan, both subscribers and regular watchers of this channel. Um, so as I said on Friday, I'm certainly no expert on Asian Hornets uh, and was a little bit naive to think, you mean, we, we wouldn't get them this early. They pointed me in the right direction regarding my traps uh, and bycatch, so I've out and about now. Uh, I've been and gathered the traps in. So one of the vital pieces of information makes sense is not to put the traps around your apron when you're trapping Asian on its early season. You ultimately you're going to bring the on its to your apron. So you want to trap them out and about, away from your sights, and obviously bearing in mind the bycatch issue. So Kev pointed me in the right direction. Uh, and I know Duncan mentioned it about not trapping in your air prey. And Duncan, thanks for again for your info on adapting these traps to make them bycatch friendly. So we've gone out now, we've uh, drilled all our traps, we've added some mesh gauze, as you'll see, and we're going to move them to other sites away from this area. It's actually strange that only a few weeks ago, I actually in interviewed Richard Knoll uh, at the beekeeping show. I'll put the link up here so you can see it if you've not I've seen it already and we actually discussed the Asian on it issue. There's not many better people more qualified than Richard Knoll. He's definitely on the front line of the Asian Hornets and has got more experience than most regarding the issue. So it's been interesting to, uh, to listen what Richard has to say about it. So anyway, a little bit of footage here of us adapting our traps. In case you've got the same ones, you might want to do the same. And if there's any more updates in the future, obviously I'll stick them on this channel so people can find out. So we're back again in a little workshop shed. So thank you to Duncan. It does show, I do read all the comments uh, that get put on YouTube. So he suggested a few adaptations to our cook type Asian Hornet traps. So obviously I do want to mitigate the bycatch in these traps. So yeah, Duncan suggested a few little adaptations to this one just to make it a little bit more uh, bycatch friendly so they can escape while still catching the Asian Hornets if they're about. It is only one Hornet that's out there. Our closest site to the sighting is less than two miles away. It's one hornet, the weather was extremely bad Friday night, it's still pretty bad now, so fingers crossed, it's either succumbed to the weather or it's landed on a windscreen, but either way, you know, it would be a bonus. So I'm just gonna take you through now these little changes I'm gonna make. Uh, Duncan suggested either some mesh or some sponge within the trap. Uh, I've got some scrap varroa mesh, so I'm gonna cut that to size. Hopefully it will just sit on top of the, uh, in the cup. And then I'm gonna drill what he suggested, some 6.5 mil holes around the top of the cup again, just to let any bar catch out. So I'll show you as I go through this. So I've just used a little sober noodle cup base, which happens to be the perfect size, just to sit on top of that cup there. So I've got my wire snips. As you can see, we've got all sorts going on behind us. Loads of little projects. We've got a couple of things going on for a, another DIY video in a couple of weeks. Uh, so we've stuff all over as well as dealing with the bees and, and everything else going on. So busy times. So I'll try and do this without stabbing myself. Or cutting my jacket. I couldn't have found any thick of her own mesh, could I? Ah, now we're cooking on gas. I 
You know, I caught me sticking my tongue out then, concentrating. And there we go. Let's try that. Oh, like a glove. There we go. Perfect. So I'll just do that a few more times with that, and then we'll drill some holes around the top. So there we go, I've managed to get four little discs out of that one piece of raw mesh. So I'm going to crack on with some more of those once we're done. Just pick up all these little bits because nobody likes a piece of mesh to the face once they start up the table saw. So next then we're going to drill the holes. That's it, I'm just going to rough guess it, probably four to six holes in this. Some tough plastic that. You keep seeing my concentration face. Not the best, is it? So there, we've just got a few burrs on the back, I'll just tidy them up now with a countersink. This will probably be the most over-engineered Asian you know, trap in existence. <clears throat> Catch friendly. Just need to do that now with the other ones I put out on Friday. <laughs> 